Uh, next, I would like to introduce Congressman Steve Pierce. Congressman Pierce has been a U.S. Representative off and mostly on since 1996. Congressman Pierce knows firsthand the issues concerning and concerns of small businesses since he's long owned and operated Lee Fishing Tools, an oil field services company in Hobbs. Here's Congressman Pierce. Thank you very much. General, thanks for being here. And uh, Scott, uh, thank you all uh, very much. Uh, as uh, Mark said, I was in uh, small business myself. One of the questions that stumped me the most uh, as I got elected was, why were you in small business? And it took several years, but I finally realized there's probably nothing more than a DNA deficiency, I would tell you. <laughs> if you're in small business, if you could do anything else in life, you would go and do it because small business is one of the toughest things you do. You got to come in and unlock the place in the morning. You got to do your own computer programming. Uh, you have to do your marketing. You have to do your sales. You have to get out and make sure the operation is running correctly. And then you got to bill somebody for it. And then you got to make sure that they pay you for it. And so, uh, small businesses, thank you very much for what you do. You create most of the jobs in America, and many of the times Washington forgets uh, what you're about. And so I appreciate that Senator Heinrich has put this together and, and appreciate that Senator Udall has, has commented correctly. These are not partisan issues. And shame on us when we try to make them in, in politics into partisan issues. I tell you, as I go around the state and the nation right now, I find that, uh, that mostly our business owners, uh, they have their heads down and, and just wonder if they're going to be able to survive. Uh, and it is very difficult times. Uh, back in 1999, when the price of oil fell from 20 bucks to uh, six, uh, we lost 80% of our revenue in one day. 80%, it was gone like that. And so I'm very familiar with uh, that. Uh, that was about a 12, 13 month period before it came back. Very familiar with what many of you are going through. And know that, uh, that all of us are echoing the sentiments the same, that it's a special day when we can get these directors to come here and, and meet up with you because that's where the process begins. So if I could encourage you today, lift your gaze up. Yes, we're beat down as a country and the economy is struggling. New Mexico is going to struggle. We have struggles ahead of us. But I will tell you, it's not the people who have the most advantage going into the game that win. It's the people with the biggest heart and the most grit and determination. You're competing with people from around the world for these contracts. I was just seeing uh, this morning where Air Force One is handled by the Saudi Arabians. So you're competing with everyone, but we can compete there because I know your heart. I know your grit and your determination. And that's what it takes. Now, I, as when I was in small business, I actually went through the process and had a contract with the government myself for about six years. And it is not an easy process, but we as New Mexicans can solve those processes. You all should come together as a group and say we shouldn't all have to learn the same lessons of how to work our way through the maze of the paperwork. And it will be there because that's one of the requirements to make sure that we do things fairly, properly. They have to document everything from the agency. And we all appreciate it when, we, when our money is spent well. But when you're trying to get into that pool of $4 billion, which uh, they're here representing today, and keep in mind that's uh, more economies than some of the countries in the world, so $4 billion in this, this one budget is, is available, then it is imperative that we look within ourselves and find what we can to succeed. Not always the idea is that everything's already established. It's already done. I'll share, I'll share a couple of short stories with you. Now, Uber, you can like them or dislike them, but less than five years ago, less than five years ago, they had three, three drivers. Three drivers, today they're worth $60 billion. My friends, this is the time for your innovation, for your creative minds to go to work because processes are available to you that were never before available in human history. Become one of those transformational companies here in New Mexico and lead the way. You'll find us all following when you do that, but somebody has to stand up and lead the way. The second thing that I bring to your attention is uh, that 30 years ago, the brewery industry in America had dwindled down to less than 40 breweries. Now, I'm not here to sell beer this morning, uh, that's for this afternoon. But those, uh, those uh, 40 breweries were the weakest and least viable countries in all the breweries in the world, the companies in the world. One person said, 
It does not have to be that way. He started a little brand called Samuel Adams, and he said, we in America are going to start making good beer, and I'm going to start making it first. So now there are 4,000 or 40,000, I can't remember which, but there, we have grown tremendously, and we lead the world, and now American hops are the highest priced hops in the world because of the demand. That's what one person can do and what we're looking for here. If New Mexico is going to be a part of moving forward, it begins with us us the people. We in Congress, we in the Senate will help you along the way, but we can't do it for you. I sympathize with the challenges you face. I've been there myself. Uh, some people want to send me back out there uh, shorter or sooner than I would want to go, uh, but that's okay. That's a part of the political process. But know that, uh, that you're the heartbeat of Albuquerque. You're the heartbeat of New Mexico. God bless you for your work. Uh, keep up the good things. Thank you.